Is that what she said? Is that right? Is that accurate? I'm Steph. And I'm Pete. And that's our two-year-old son, Hayes. We were selected by Airbnb to travel the world for a year, calling a new destination home for a month at a time. And this month, we're in Seoul. Follow along. Good morning. This morning, we are going on a tour to the DMZ. To be honest, at this moment in time, I do not know anything about this area, which is why we have signed up for the tour. By the way, before we get started on this video, a huge thank you to VIP Travel here in Seoul for partnering with us on this video. driven about an hour outside of Seoul to the edge of where South Korea meets the DMZ, which then meets North Korea. So what do we do here? Do we go Let's do it. Uh, it's at this point that you can't be on a private tour, so we are exploring this park and then waiting for a public shuttle bus to take us to the DMZ. I wasn't expecting such a tourist attraction. It's quite bizarre. Though. It's like an amusement park over there. There's a sky gondola thing here. Um, quite crazy. It's my first impressions. But that's really all it is now, right? Is a tourist attraction. Yeah, but it's still so tense between the two countries that I feel like it's making too much of a light thing of it. I don't know. It's maybe I'm maybe made a bit too close. Nancy, our guide who preferred not to be filmed on the bus, gave us a lot of history about the Korean War and the the DMZ, which we will try to distill for you in this video a little bit, but I'm a little bit overwhelmed already. To your point, Pete, I think she said that this isn't, this obviously isn't a place where a lot of South Koreans go. It is largely a tourist attraction now. Um, obviously it's a loaded history and on top of that, many families were separated when this border was created. So this park that we're in now, she actually said there's some families that when they miss their family members who they haven't seen since the 50s, they come here and they look across towards North Korea and they get quite emotional. Is that what she said? Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, that's correct because I mean, it was a really sudden creation of the, of the border and the ceasefire. And so yeah, I mean, you could... You can understand, I think, if your family was separated, you definitely would want to come somewhere, feel somewhat close to them, and just remember them. But yeah, I mean, quite somber kind of place, really. Also, the war never technically ended because they signed a ceasefire, not a peace treaty, uh, in 1953. So, on a technicality, they've just agreed to ceasefire. The war is not over. Is that accurate? Mm hmm Hundreds of security cameras all over this place. I was just filming a little bit close to the fence there and then I just noticed some cameras just like looking down at me. I guess behind me is just like a train that used to go travel between what is now South Korea and North Korea before the war and they've left it here as kind of a sad memory. It's filled with bullet holes and it was left in the DMZ after the war. Train coming. Is there another train coming? Yeah. Okay, keep a lookout. We've also just seen the Freedom Bridge, which is a bridge that was used to return prisoners of war when the Armistice Agreement was signed in 1953. I read that there were actually two other bridges that were bombed and destroyed, so they built that bridge as a temporary structure just to return the prisoners. There are all sorts of other monuments and things around here that I don't know what they are and I'm probably missing out. So if you've been here and you've learned something cool about this area that I haven't mentioned, Leave it down below. We knew that this tour was from 10.30 until 4.30 and we didn't really know what food options would be. 
Uh, not knowing that all of these stops apparently have food areas, amusement parks, normal parks. So, okay, this is a lucky boy who gets to eat a hot dog with rice cakes for lunch. Uh, so we will stop by at the checkpoint. So if there is a military soldier getting the bus, then he will check your passport in person. Please don't try to take a quarter of the military thing. If you try, they take your quarter of phone or the camera. So we have arrived at the third tunnel and we started our adventure here with a movie about the DMZ. The only DMZ in the world. Half a century after the division, the wind of the reunification comes blowing. It's all like peace and wildflowers and animals that find peace in the DMZ. It's kind of bizarre. Hayes loved it. And now we're gonna go into a tunnel that I didn't even know existed and I'm kind of worried it's gonna be really claustrophobic. And from here, you can go inside a filter tunnel. Here is the MD of the military demarcation line. Who knew that there was tunnels there? And they're really exhausting to walk down and back up. I mean, to be honest, it was kind of like Ruby Falls. It was a little bit claustrophobic, and we felt like we'd seen it and turned around, which was good because then the group caught up with us. Steep and wet and humid down there. So these tunnels, they didn't know they were here. And in 1975, um, some, a guy from North Korea was like in them and then didn't want to die underground like lots of people had been. So was able to escape and then run across to South Korea and then tell them they're building tunnels, they're building tunnels. So then South Korea was looking for them and looking for them and shooting a lot of water down there because I think something about like, if there was water down there and the dynamite exploded, they would see where the tunnels were and they found the first tunnel in like 1975 or something, the last tunnel in like 1990, I think there's four. This is the third one. Nancy was explaining that they're unlike the Coochie tunnels in Vietnam or the tunnels in Berlin because these tunnels were built for the purpose of invading South Korea versus escape. This is the DMZ souvenir shop. If you want to buy North Korean whiskey, this is the only place you can do it. You can see the DPRK or something. Here? Can Mm. Or you can buy North Korean stamps. You can get some of the wire fence from the DMZ. Do you need that in your life, please? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I need that. Yeah. You take that toy. Yeah. Yeah. Why? What would you do with it? Oh, what, 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 what. what would you do with it? Wire. Play it. I don't know if you can play with that wire. Nancy explained that that wire is from when they tore down the wire, barbed wire fence to make electric fences. They started selling pieces of it, much like the Berlin Wall. I know, I hear you taking it. Can you put them back? No. To reach here, we crossed the uh, Unification Bridge, which was built, is that right? by the um, owner of Hyundai, so a very wealthy South Korean man who's actually from North Korea. And he asked the South Korean president, and uh, I think it was Kim Jong-il at the time, if he could cross into North Korea to visit his family, which civilians are not allowed to do, but they both granted it. And because they granted it, he built the bridge, I think. But more importantly, he brought 1,001 pregnant cows across to his village as a thank you. So even though it's called the Unification Bridge, uh, Koreans more commonly call it the Cow Bridge, and as you cross, we couldn't film, um, there are pregnant cow statues. Journey Hyundai truck, the 1001 pregnant cow cross this bridge and go to North Korea. The more you know. DMZ was full of so many lovely parks and statues. What's the deal with the soccer balls? I'm not sure. If you had to make it up, what would you say? Um, 
I don't know that the world is united through the beautiful game. Good one. So I was telling Hayes that we could push North and South Korea together. So he was trying, he wasn't able to do it. I said, we need some more people to help us. So he turns around and he shouts, people! To try and get someone to help us. So we told him, Hayes, if you were able to do that, you would be the most popular person in the whole world. This part is the South Korea territory, and this part is the North Korea territory. We're standing on the observatory tower in the DMZ. Not officially in the DMZ, she just said. We were officially in the DMZ when we were in the tunnels. Now we're on like the southern edge of it. But anyway, there's a viewpoint, and you can see a number of things. You can see this area of factories where South Korea built factories that they actually used to use. We earlier passed by. Korea, South Korea's only international train station because it used to carry materials back and forth to these factories but no longer does, is that right? Yeah. You can see the largest flagpole in the world over on North Korea's side. Unfortunately, it's not a windy day so you can't see it. You can see South Korea's flag. You can see um, a village with a lot of military personnel and then you can see the third largest city in North Korea which is the only kind of like real town that you can see from here. What else can you see? Uh, you can see South Korea. You can see Hayes playing with an ice cream truck. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty neat. Yeah, it's a really cool view. Oh, you can see the um, building where Trump met the president, Kim Jong-un. Yes, yes. A few years ago. I think he's the only sitting president to <laughs> have, have gone to North Korea. Hayes, what did you want to ask mommy? What did you want to ask mommy? No, you asked mommy, can we come back here tomorrow? Right? I don't want to see the inside of your <laughs> So we are at our final stop in the DMZ, which is a DMZ village. Um, Nancy was explaining that people want to live in the DMZ because they're South Korean citizens. Um, but once you live here, you have to live here forever. Maybe until like you're 40 you can decide, I don't know. But you can enter, you can go back to Seoul and stuff, you can get permits. And um, if you marry somebody that lives in the DMZ, you can enter, but only women can enter because men are not allowed to because if you live here, not only do you not pay taxes, which is why people want to live here, um, but you don't have to serve in the military. So to prevent that, only women can marry in. Apparently there's a long waiting list for people to live here and retirees love to do it. Everybody that lives here is very wealthy because they're farmers, there's really fertile soil. Um, excellent soybeans, that's the ice cream haze, uh, haze and pea you're gonna get. No taxes, but you can still buy property and stuff in in Seoul and other parts of South Korea. I don't fully understand it, but that's what she explained. We're also, I know this doesn't like look like a village, I guess you can't go into the village village part because of African swine flu risk. So there's this like commercial edge of it. So it doesn't really feel like a village, it feels like a truck stop, but we're in a DMZ village, evidently. <laughs> Oh, hey, see, look, 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 look. Can you, oh, okay. <laughs> Can you say thank you? Mango. Huh? Mango. It's mango. I think it's soybean. Can you say soybean? No, mango. All of the products they farm here, like the rice and the soybeans and the grains and stuff, are apparently very high quality and very expensive. The land is fertile and there are these high quality products. The UN also doesn't allow any chemicals, so they're all very organic. So the farmers here are wealthy and they like to live here and they don't pay taxes. That's what I understood to be true. I hope that's right. Okay, we're back where we started. Final thoughts on the DMZ tour? DMZ tour, it was excellent. Yeah, it's really, really interesting. Definitely something that is worth doing if you're in Seoul, because there's nothing really like it. I mean, there's nothing really like it in the world. That's what I meant. Ah. There's nothing like it <laughs> in the world. No, it was super interesting. I don't know if it's what I expected. I didn't have a lot of expectations, and I didn't know a lot about the history, so it was really cool to get to learn about it and see such a unique area. Oh. Big thank you to VIP Travel in Seoul for allowing us to come on that tour and an extra big thank you to Nancy, our guide who is full of information and could answer everybody's questions. 
and was outstanding. So if you like this video, you might like the video on the screen now when we went to Guangzhou Market and tasted so many different Korean foods. It was delicious. It's been one of our favorite places here during our short time that we've been in Seoul already. Check it out and thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.